The final fan fest for Dawn Trail has come and gone, and we got some wild reveals this time around, but also some expected ones. I'm not gonna waffle around for an intro, like, comment, subscribe, let's get right into it. The final trailer is really long, over 5 minutes, and there's a lot of new instruments added through the parts we've already seen, like the drum beat through the whole thing. I'm very glad Soken agreed with me of the like, robot -y reverb effect on the vocals being good for the vacation vibes. After Taco Tia, we got what I called in the pre-show. I said I wasn't convinced Pictomancy is the main job, expecting it to be the limited job, but that Cryo would be the new mage. The big bridge at the end? I want to cross it. I want that bridge. And I can't wait for us to fight Gilgamesh on it. Then finally at the end, we got a glimpse of Femra, and you could hear the audience audibly cheer when she showed up. Yoshida comes out with a cool baseball jersey for FF14, they're holding FanFest in a baseball stadium. On the back, it says Warrior of Light. When Kate comes out, she has a black jersey. When she leaves, we see on the back it says Warrior of Darkness. These are probably gonna get sold. But also, Yoshida looks pretty good. He probably actually got some sleep. Helps that he's on home turf for once. Ultimately, no release date for Dawn Trail yet besides Summer. The Endwalker delay definitely hurt Yoshida's pride. This game is his baby, and he doesn't want a repeat of any kind like that. So waiting until we have a more assured release date is good. We're also assured it's not October. Then we are shown the Pictomancer skill showcase and good god what are these effects. These are so flashy. They went so over the top for all of them. Like I'm more excited for Pictomancer than Viper now. I say this as a melee main. This stuff looks so good. But as I said with Viper, what they showed had absolutely zero context for a real rotation. Do not take this to mean anything of how they play. We got like six skills? I can't wait for us to get proper showcases. Though, also, they were extra explicit in telling us that Pictomancer does not have combat rays despite being less DPS focused. Unfortunately, they bring out some unnamed model for the Pictomancer costume showcase. If she is named, I don't know where. Yoshida definitely should have been the one to wear it. I want to see Yoshida in Realm's outfit. Apparently the Twitch chat was being horny and asking for it too, but like, I will gladly agree with them in this case because it would be funny. And obviously Pictomancer is from FF6. Cool. I got multiple comments on the EU FanFest video saying the shirt is not for Viper. The TMNT shirt is not about the Twin Sword user in the front being a hit to our new Twin Sword job. But they said here that the shirt was indeed for both of the jobs. I didn't acknowledge that they said it was still a hint for Pictomancer, but multiple people said it was not for Viper. Which, yeah, no, I am vindicated here. We got an assured release date for 6.55 on January 16th, which, yeah, we kind of knew that. They follow the pattern pretty religiously, but we'll get our first interaction with Femroth, and I bet many people will not be completing the quest just so they can G-pose with the NPC. They then reveal that Dawn Trail is going to cover more landmass than they had previously revealed. We already knew that all of the new world was huge, but they kept it hidden in clouds until now. But it makes sense because of the town that seems to be there. But let's not skip ahead. They show us areas, parts of what we've seen, parts new. And there's a Red Dead Redemption 2 area. Finally, makes sense how it won Steam's Labor of Love. And also like, luminescent forest I want to go to. And then, the town the clouds were hiding. What the hell is this? Why are we playing Fantasy Star Online all of a sudden? This is called Solution 9. Final Fantasy 9? Well, Zidane has a limit break called Solution 9. I did not believe or have hope that Viper is Zidane. I am so, so, so hopeful now. Please be FF9 and please lead us to Gaia. To quote what they said on stage, we are loudly destroying any mental image you might have had for Dawn Trail. And, uh, yeah? They keep emphasizing, like they did for Endwalker, that they're barely revealing anything. And if this reveal is nothing, 
then what are they hiding? We were convinced that the sisters and anima were our primal trials for Endwalker. They were merely dungeon bosses. If what we know is not immense spoilers, then what does count as spoilers here? My current theory? The golden city they were hiding with a spoiler blocker at EU FanFest? That's Gaia. The golden city is Gaia. And there, we clash with Garland and Kuja. Please? But like, this announcement broke me for like 10 minutes. Baby Mamul Jaw. That is all. Next thing of note was dungeon footage. Are they gonna show us the the, the raft on the river? Yep. <laughs> they gonna show us the raft on the river? Immediate cut to raft on the river. I mean, I called it. But also, some of these look super pretty. The devs put in a lot of work into dungeon visuals. And with the new graphics work, we really should pay more attention to it all. Salty Spittoon Sabotender. That is all. The new artifact gears we got previews of, really looking good. Unless you're Summoner. Always the horn. But damn if Gunbreaker isn't looking fine. And the Astrologian set. Not my style, but I expect a lot of people will be using that. Next was the new lifestyle content. My initial reaction was, we're whalers on the moon. My second was, oh, I guess FF14 wanted to be better than Starfield 2. But then it turns out, it's No Man's Sky. It's co-op. I guess like Ishgardian Firmament. It's cosmic exploration. We're visiting planets. As someone who likes Island Sanctuary, this is immediately up my alley. I really, really want this. I can't wait for the full reveal of it. Also, as someone in my chat said, Hrothgar make iPad. The Alliance Raid? The bad guy looks cool. Zodiac too. But as I said, I have no nostalgia as I never touched FF11. Glad for all of you who do. Though, you are now required to go be a black mage. Guaranteed that the raid will reflect it for a few dialogue lines. The 8 player raid is we're raiding NVIDIA because this just outright is a graphics card. It even has RGB. It's called the Arcadion and is an FF14 unique raid. I'm all for that, even if I am chomping at the bit for FF9 stuff. Though when I saw the name, I thought it was like futuristic Arcadia from FF12. The new ultimate raid definitely is the biggest surprise for me. They are swapping the order they do stuff for something, I guess because our next ultimate is Eden. We're skipping Shinryu. Instead, we have a Futures Rewritten Ultimate, or Fru. Who's ready to prog fruit? I wanna do some fruit prog. So a theory a few people have had is that they're swapping the order to keep the surprise of what's next. But I don't really hold that any weight for my expectations and wants. It's probably accurate, but to me the surprise is how they do the theme. It's not just a rush of bosses. And TWR didn't even bring in the Ultima weapon until the very end. Dragon Song took story elements of the raids to the extreme, and top was only Omega. The surprise is the fight itself. The surprise is not the theme. It's how they handle the theme. So that they're skipping Shinryu is partly disappointing. They could do a lot with it. Maybe they don't want to go right into Xenos after we fought him again in Endwalker. But like, he was a Reaper? Samurai Xenos fights completely differently. And then the final phase? We've never fought Shinryu. Yes, that is a true statement. We fought Xenos, who had taken control of an injured, captured Shinryu. What if Shinryu was at full power? What if he took control of Xenos and his resonant powers? They said in the story that Shinryu was equal to, if not stronger than the 7th Umbral Calamity version of Bahamut. And the fight against Omega kind of shows that. There's a lot of places they can go with it. It's not just fight Xenos again. They mention and emphasize we're getting a new field operation. Cool, I want it. I like Eureka and Boshia. Then they told us the limited job. We're playing Pokemon, it's Beastmaster. The big question though is what kinds of pet AI we are getting. 
And I would like to give a hearty I told you so to the people who told me Beastmaster was never gonna happen. Them moving away from the pet experience in normal jobs has no bearing on what they do with limited jobs. Moving on to the graphical update, like holy hell yeah the difference is night and day on everything except maybe Lalafell. But even their hair is much more detailed and their scarf is actually a scarf now. But ignore the character skin and all that for a moment. Look at the clothing and the bricks in the background. You see a huge difference in those. They also emphasize the following. Your character may look very different after the update. And that's okay. You should be able to adjust your character to move back toward your intended look and design. And to assure you of this, they are looking into giving everyone a free Fantasia. Let everyone redo their character in the new engine at no cost to us. This very much is going to be good. I expect they might do similar to the veteran reward Fantasia though. Make it a Dawn Trail reward. You have to complete the main story to get your Fantasia. The rework definitely looks to be worth it for visual fidelity. I'm not huge on graphics normally, but even I have to admit this is a notable increase. Especially for darker skin tones. They made sure to heavily emphasize darker skin tones were lacking before. Now, you will actually be able to enjoy it. Oh, and Hrothgar actually have fur now. But I really don't get the people who are underwhelmed. We were never going to get GTA 6 graphics. This wasn't going to break even GTX 3000 series cards. Would give us a good reason to go do the raid, but it's not. They still need to work with PS4 and 5, and Dawn Trail might even be the end of the PS4. 8.0 might be PS5 only. Lower end PCs are going to start struggling if they go too far. This is a big leap. You're just never happy. They gave us a quick overview of the two die channels. And yeah, works as expected. Looks good. They made sure to emphasize the fact that graphics requirements are going up for Dawn Trail. Xbox Beta begins in February. This is another reason they're not gonna go huge on graphics. And the FF16 crossover is in April. Then finally, we end on the Hrothgal herself. They look pretty good, and I'm glad for their inclusion, even if I have no interest in them beyond the variety they add into the game, but there was no way that they didn't upset some people. But they went with Ronso in the end. This is pretty similar. This makes sense as that's their name on the first, Hrothgar or Ronso. After leaving us on a final key art, Kate leaves and up comes NFT Man Kiryu. The end of the main event. Sadly for most of us Western people, we can't watch most of the events because it's happening at times we should be asleep. People on the night shift or insomniacs enjoy the event, not the insomnia. Oh, and Soken remains forever a treasure. That's a summary of all my thoughts. Pictomancer looks amazing. I like raiding. And what the hell, is this really going to be FF9 fan service? What are your thoughts? Are you a Pictomancer main now? Probably. A lot of people are now drawing cool S's. And remember, be sure to stay subscribed for the eventual guides I'll be making for the new jobs. Pictomancer might actually be super confusing, and I'll happily help it make sense. In the meantime, see you for the next regularly scheduled video. Take care and may the power of Anne Anidhog's lay waste to your enemies.